Hey, James, thanks for being here today for the spotlight interview. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, so in my day job, I work in the video game industry uh, as a technical artist, which is a mix of programming and art. And then uh, since 2015-ish or so, I've been doing lots of political volunteering stuff as well. And then I have many nerdy hobbies and all sorts of fun things at the same time. Oh, oh so do I. I I'm a big nerd too. <laughs> For the, uh, I, have a, I have a second job. I'm probably the nerdiest um, uh, climate change nerd, mm. nerd on the team. <laughs> Um, what, how, how else are you involved with the Green Party? Uh, right now, I'm uh, part of the organizing crew for the Vancouver District uh, Riding Association. Uh, I was a provincial councillor for a little bit, and uh, I've ran a couple times, and I just generally help out however I'm able. I know you've run in the provincial election 2017 yep. for the West End um, uh, Vancouver um, riding. Mm -hmm. where, where, when else did you, did you run? I don't, I don't know about this. The, the snap election, I stepped up to run again in the same direct district. Oh yeah, um, I remember that now. Yeah. Um, what, what were the challenges you faced? Uh, as what, as a candidate? Yes. <clears throat> um, for me personally, <clears throat> the most difficult thing is fundraising because I just, I don't like money <laughs> in general. I'm not good at asking people for money. Uh, I feel like uncomfortable doing so. So yeah, for me personally, that's the hardest thing about having to run for office is just how much it costs and how difficult it is to get that money so you can do all the things you'd like to do. Right on. Um, what was your most memorable moment on your campaigns? Uh, lots of stuff was really cool. Um, one that was really fun in the 2017 one was uh, West End is the most compact district in the province. It's the smallest one physically. Uh, and so the, the candidates ran into each other just a lot while we were out campaigning. And there was one time in which all four of us wound up on the same street corner and we just each took up one of the four corners. And so anyone who wandered by in that moment could have uh, grilled all of the candidates at once, at once which was pretty fun. Great. Uh, what inspires you to, um, to run? Uh, I got involved mostly because uh, of the electoral reform stuff that went on federally when Justin Trudeau promised to switch up the system and then ditch that promise. And that kind of catalyzed me to uh, realize that the people that promise us stuff that we then elect are free to just ignore that promise that they make. And uh, there's not really a whole lot we can do about it, um, as aside from getting involved ourselves and trying to really make sure that the people we're electing are gonna stick to the things that they've said they do. Um, and so that's what got me involved, wanting to help out folks that I trusted. It's good to rely on ourselves sometimes, not just the government. I mean, that too, like if I, can't trust my electeds. I can trust myself. So if I can get myself elected, <laughs> I'll do what I want. I could because um, I'm terrible at lying. I'm, yeah. I, I would be the most honest politician. <laughs> yes. Um, who inspires you? Anyone in particular? Uh, I, I guess for the last little while, a lot of uh, economists that have been looking into green ideas, I find really interesting. Uh, there's a Nobel laureate named Eleanor Ostrom. There's a bunch of economists like Georgios Kallis and uh, Molly Scott Cato, who's a green MEP in Europe, is also an economist. Um, uh, a guy in Canada named Peter Victor, who does uh, all sorts of economic kind of framework of how we can change the way we've designed our systems to work to get a green future. I think that's really interesting. I've been reading a bunch about that. Um, you published a book in 2019, am I right? Hey, yeah. I'm um, telling you more about this book. Uh, yeah, after the 2017 election, um, running for office makes you realize how much stuff you don't know. Uh, and there were all these questions that people asked me during that um, campaign that I really wanted to find the answers to after. Uh, and I, I like when I'm learning stuff, I find the, the best way to kind of internalize it is to write it down or to teach it to someone else, because that's how you can make sure that you really know what you've learned. Uh, and I just kind of wound up compiling it into a book um, that was about a lot of the history of the Greens, a lot of the ideas that make up the Greens, how those ideas are different than other parties, where the kind of philosophy that separates the Greens from others came from. And uh, yeah, put it together in a book, got it out just in time for the 2019 federal and was pretty happy with it. I know you said it was Germany that came up with the word green, the Green Party. You said yeah. that in there. 
Yeah, they were the ones that decided that that was the moniker that they were yes. used. Before that, there was a bunch of parties called like the Ecological Party and the People Party and the Values Party. And then, yeah, they grabbed the color as the identifier. All right, I have almost every politician's book, which you probably know. <laughs> okay, what, what should you go on to next to? Um, what, why do you think it's important to volunteer? Because there is a, uh, there is an endless amount of work that could be put in for political campaigns. Uh, provincially, there's 50,000 people in each district, and it is impossible for a candidate to talk to all 50,000 people as much as they'd like to. It's just, we just can't do it. Um, and the more people that you have working on your campaign, the more people you'll be able to reach, and there's never going to be a lack of things to do. <laughs> so politicians will be extremely uh, thankful for every person that shows up to try to help. Great. Um, what would you say to get for, say to people to get um, more people involved? With their uh, a lot of people think of like the governance of our province or cities or country as something that's done by other people. Um, and it's not, it's done by us. It's our system that we designed and we get to be in charge of. Um, and if you want to have an impact, just showing up to volunteer it's a huge way to do that because we designed the system. We decide how it works. We decide what it does. And all you got to do is show up and you can have a part in that. And it's uh, it's surprisingly easy to talk to your elected representative uh, if you just show up to help out for a campaign. Um, it is. And just do it. It's not really that hard. I understand. I've been involved in 22 campaigns. Yeah. They're so, <laughs> they're so, uh, they, so desperate for volunteers that you can you can get in there and be friends with your elected representative if you want to help them out. It's great. As soon as you get amazing perks, like I got to got a free tour and, and part of Mint Hill and got to go on yeah. uh, conventions. Yeah. You yeah, can earn a lot, of, you learn a lot of amazing things with volunteer work. Mm -hmm. and even Elizabeth May's office, they were telling me how, um, they're amazed how much I volunteered for the Green Party and how mm -hmm. important I was to them because of my extra work. Yeah. And, Anyways, and we know how difficult it is for people to find time to volunteer. So if you do show up, people will be very thankful for the time you're putting in. I was often told that um, I did campaign for, for Nick, Nick Lutton's campaign. I was often mm -hmm. told that I was brave for still canvassing and, um, with, with a mask on and, mm -hmm. and during COVID. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Well, James, um, nice to wrap. I have to, have to wrap up wrap this interview up. Um, is there anything else you would like to say? Any other comments? Uh, no, it's good. It was awesome to talk to you. Glad to see Me you too. Too. <laughs> I'm excited. Thanks. Yeah.